Everyone says Ryan Halligan had a wicked sense of humor. So funny, he dreamed of becoming a comedian. Over there. But at 13, Ryan committed suicide. And he was very carefree, um, very generous spirit. His shattered parents, at a loss, have relived moments over and over again looking for clues. Ryan struggled academically, but he had lots of friends and he loved being online. He was a well-liked, good-looking kid who fell under everybody's radar in terms of being a typical kid that's bullied. So what happened? I, um, I had to spend a lot of time reconstructing, going back. What Ryan's parents did not know at the time was that their son was getting bullied here at school and the bullies were following him home in cyberspace. Ryan spent hours online following his parents' rules. No talking to strangers, no pornography sites, no giving out personal information. But his father discovered a chilling world of instant messages and emails. The real problem, people Ryan knew. Some taunted him about girls he liked. Others hurled homophobic accusations. I found uh, just some very hurtful stuff. Hey, Ryan, I'm gay. I like you. Uh, you know, I want to do this to you. I want to, you know, very graphic sexual kind of stuff. One so-called friend encouraged Ryan to kill himself. Where the kids said, you know, you're finally going to stop complaining. And uh, my son, yeah, tonight's the night. I'm going to do it. You'll read about it in the papers tomorrow. And the kids said, talking about killing himself. And the kids said it's about effing time. Ryan's friends say the Halligans stumbled into a world many parents don't know exists. An anonymous cyber world where everyone is a potential victim. Yes, you can say whatever you want to them because you know that they can't get you back. I mean, because you're just kind of like a nameless face out there. They describe a sometimes vicious place of backbiting where teens even send nasty notes under assumed or stolen names. How many of you have been called a name or teased online while you were instant messaging? An iSafe America survey found nearly 80% of teens said they'd been threatened or bullied online. Few complain, fearing their parents will pull computer privileges or make things worse by irritating the bullies. So then why don't you guys just stay off the computer? Because the computer is like you're linked to everything like now, like for us, like that's what we do. If you're not there, when, they, when everyone's like making the plans and stuff, you'll probably be left out for a lot of stuff. They don't think adults take cyber bullies and their victims seriously. Doing it, they wouldn't get in trouble as much as if they punched them. And verbal can be worse. It, yeah. it is worse because than because it like because it hurts you. Yeah, physical like yeah, you'll have a bruise for a little while. But it's nothing like, like you'll verbal. get over it. Yeah. But like when someone tells you something hurtful, it really stays with you. The Halligans don't blame cyber bullies for Ryan's death. They only wish they knew what was going on so they could have intervened, which is why John successfully pushed for a cyberbullying law in Vermont, one of the few in the country. Now he also talks to groups about a problem he says is growing fast. The advice I give to parents is I think you should go ahead and install those programs that help you monitor the activity that's going on in your computer. To me, it's, uh, it's, it's the trust and verify approach. Mm -hmm. Right. I trust you, and we're going to verify that things are, go are going okay. Their story, he says, is a cautionary tale. Parents can't take the computer lightly. They must get involved, he says, even more than they think necessary. Their child's health may be at stake. Adora Yudoji, CNN, Burlington, Vermont.